Your sixth and final unit in your paper will be about globalisation, or world of work as it's called. Uh, the new economy is uh, the opposite of the old economy. The old economy of the world was about factories, making stuff, making sure that those factories were built near raw materials uh, that were needed, and that's what created jobs and gave people employment. The new economy, on the other hand, isn't about factories. It's about knowledge, ideas, services. It's about global labour. It's about the use of the internet, ICT and media. Examples of these are things like dot-coms, internet-based companies like Amazon and Google, global customer base. Not like in the old economy where you had a factory, you made stuff, you sold most of it locally. It's not the case anymore. Okay, the new economy, basically the internet, uh, things like finance and banking and stuff. This is all a process of globalization, the growth of ideas, culture and companies that spread around the world, use of modern communications and large transnational corporations, Ford, BP, um, Esso, Coca-Cola, McDonald's. Okay, they have a global market. They have global consumers, people all around the world buy their products, and they have branches and offices all over the world. Think about it. McDonald's, you can go to pretty much any country in the world, there is a McDonald's there, even though it's an American company. It has spread around the world. That's essentially what globalization is, but it has a number of benefits and problems, uh, particularly for LEDCs. So, transnational corporations. Uh, in the 1960s, there were about 7,000. Today, there's well over 60,000 transnational uh, corporations. Some of these earn more money than some countries. And we've got some examples of some of the more well-known ones there. Uh, the advantages of them. Rich LEDCs can buy things from MEDCs. Less old industry means uh, uh, and the environment of MEDCs improves. Uh, so there's less factories and stuff, and there's more wealth and jobs created in LEDCs. The disadvantages, though, are things like uh, sweatshops uh, treating, not treating the workers very well in some of the factories, like Nike factories, for instance, in LEDCs. The wages are very low, and when a company replaces, uh, moves uh, jobs to LEDCs, it means that workers in MEDCs lose their jobs and it also encourages urban growth in LEDCs because people want to move to the cities and get those jobs. Um, an example of a, a global product you could use Apple or the iPhone um, uh, they get all their stuff made in China but it's designed in America or Dell computers uh, com Dell is a an American company, but the battery for the computers are made in Mexico, the hard drive in Singapore, the graphics card in China, the power lead is made in India, for instance. So that's essentially the, the sort of global nature of transnational corporations. Outsourcing is when a company gets a particular job that it needs to do done overseas, uh, a job that used to be done back home. Things like uh, finance, things like the accounting of a company might be done by an office for an American company. Uh, the accounting might be done by people in India. Okay, so outsourcing is just particular jobs. Good things, money to LEDCs, increased profits to the companies uh, because they're paying workers less. Uh, disadvantages, sometimes poor quality work, unsocial hours. Uh, and job losses again in MEDCs. Uh, Japan, Japanese companies outsource a lot of their work to Southeast Asian countries. USA uh, outsources a lot of its work, um, or the American companies outsource a lot of their work to Latin America. And in the UK, it's places uh, like the Commonwealth, um, in particular countries like India. Um, and what's the future of the world of work then? Uh, it's, it's moving more towards the knowledge-based economy, research, development, education, uh, finance, uh, online business, the very opposite of a product-based economy, which is basically factories. The workplace isn't 
always now about going into work. The, the workplace is a lot more of a fluid concept. Thanks to communications, the internet and ICT, the office can be anywhere. You can work from home, you can work from a cafe as long as you've got a computer. Flexible working hours. Uh, so, you know, you, uh, your employer says you need to work 40 hours a week, but when you do that, 40 hours is entirely up to you. Has some good points. Um, means you're more relaxed, you're probably more happy in your job, and if you're sitting at home with a cup of tea doing your work, you're probably going to be more productive. Um, but some of the cons, isolation from colleagues. You, you haven't got the um, uh, work colleagues you haven't got work colleagues around you so there's that less of that social aspect from people if you need to work together on something that's not always going to be as easy and it's also difficult to motivate if you're not getting told to come into work at a particular time well you know you might just never get out of bed um okay now again this is going to have a six mark question uh, a six mark question might look something like this. Using examples, explain how outsourcing produces winners and losers. Think about sweatshops, uh, Nike, LEDCs. Make sure you understand the key term. Make sure you understand the command word. Make sure you understand the geographical vocabulary. Remember, this is a six mark question. You are all aiming for a level three, five to six marks. Slap Kev, your spelling needs to be bang on. Your location needs to be specific. Answer the question, don't waffle. Use your punctuation properly. Make sure you understand the keyword in the question. Make sure you're using at least three examples and use geographical vocabulary in your answer.